In 1986, the song to be topping the charts was That's What Friends Are For by Dionne Warwick, Elton John, Gladys Knight, and Stevie Wonder. The top movies to watch were Top Gun, Pretty in Pink, and Little Shops of Horrors. Also in 1986, singer and songwriter Gwen Guthrie released her infamous single, Ain't Nothing Going On But The Rent, also known as Rent. Gwen made a statement with Rent, causing controversy. Gwen was born on July 9th, 1950 in Newark, New Jersey. I read an article that she was born in Oklahoma, but throughout my entire research, I continuously read she was born in Newark, New Jersey. At the age of eight, she took piano lessons and sang in the choir of Mount Zion Baptist Church. While in high school, Gwen became a member of an all-girl vocal group that had a signature style of wearing all matching gowns and elbow length gloves, the Ebonettes. She also performed with the group the Matchmakers, alongside singer Larry Blackmom, who will become the lead singer of future group Cameo. At the graduating high school, Gwen decided to pursue a career in education, attending North State College. At the graduating, she was hired by the New York school system, taking a position of a first grade teacher. While being a teacher, she was also establishing herself in the music industry by singing and writing jingles for commercials. And it has been said that she would sometimes sing along with Valerie Simpson of Ashford and Simpson for these jingles. She shared with writer Brian Chen for Billboard back in 1993, quote, doing commercials is good and bad. Financially, it's good, but you lose your imagination. Later, you find it's all you can do. Now, I have my imagination back, and I don't want to lose it again." End quote. Gwen's career began to take off in 1974. She sang background vocals on Aretha Franklin's hit single, I'm In Love. Gwen's music career took a major leap forward after working with Aretha. She went on to work with Roberta Flack, Isaac Hayes, and many more. During this time, she was signed to CBS Records, but before the release of her debut album, there was some disagreements that led to the release of her album being canceled. In 1978, Gwen decided to leave the U.S. and relocated to the Caribbean, Jamaica to be exact. She began working with Jamaican singer-songwriter Peter Tosh. She worked on three of his projects, Bush Doctor, Mystic Man, and Wanted, Dread, and Alive. And from working with Tosh, Gwen was introduced to drummer, Sly Dunbar and bassist Robbie Shakespeare, better known as Sly and Robbie. The duo asked Gwen to sing lead vocals on the album they were working on for Island Records. Gwen at some point signed with Island Records because when it was time to release the album that Sly and Robbie were working on for the label, Island Records released the album in 1982 as Gwen's self-titled solo debut. The album featured singles It Should Have Been You, and For You. The album combined American R&B with Jamaican production touches, earning Gwen R&B and pop airplay. The same year, she also sang backup for pop artist Madonna. The following year, in 1983, Gwen released her second album, Portrait, continuing with the flow of the first album, working with Sly and Robbie, featuring singles Hopscotch and You're the One. Two years later, she released an EP titled Padlock. The EP featured dance club hits Seventh House and Peanut Butter, which were remixed by a DJ by the name of Larry Levin, who was a DJ at the popular Paradise Garage Club in New York. Paradise Garage is credited with influencing the development of modern nightclubs. It's also notable in history of dance and pop music, as well as LGBT and nightclub cultures. Gwen became the first lady of Paradise Garage because her music was a favorite in the venue. Gwen was super busy during this time because aside from her EP, she also released her third album, Just For You. But during the recording of the album, Gwen had a disagreement with Island President Chris Blackwell, which turned into an argument over creative control. Once the album was released, it didn't do as well as her two previous projects because of lack of promotion. Gwen left the label and would later share with Havelock Nelson in a music interview about Chris Blackwell, quote, he tried to hold me back, not letting me realize my full potential. I don't believe in that. That's why I left. Slavery is over, honey, end quote. After taking time off after giving birth to her second child, Ayana, Gwen returned to the studio to work on her fourth studio album, Good To Go Lover, and she also signed with UK label Polydor. The album featured her signature single, Rent. The album reached number 20 on US R&B albums, and the single Rent reached number one on US R&B charts as well as US dance charts. The single caused controversy due to the lyrics.
You got to have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. No romance without finance. Rent was a sarcastic look at the male and female financial aspect of a relationship. She starts to single with, quote, bill collectors at my door. What can you do for me? End quote. Letting it be known, if you're going to approach her, you better be coming with something more than just a conversation. It's a little funny how a song from over 37 years ago can still be the anthem for some today. The single was inspired by an expression her grandfather used to say. I too have heard my grandparents use this expression. During an interview for the Billboard book of number one rhythm and blues hits, Gwen shared with Adam White and Fred Bronson, quote, the two biggest arguments in relationships are usually money and children. So I think people just related to it. And it had a good beat. I was just saying it takes two. That both parties should be productive, end quote. Rent may have been her signature and only pop hit, but she went back to the roots of her debut album using the sound of reggae for her single Friends and Lovers duet with artist Boris Gardiner, along with her studio album Lifeline released the following year. In 1987, Gwen remade the Beatles single Ticket to Ride, which was a club success. Also, her music appeared on The Fumes, Jack Flash, and Disorderlies. In 1988, Gwen departed from Polydor Records and signed with Warner Brothers. In the early 90s, Polydor Records began to underperform. The company started to cut down on their staff and roster, shifting into operating under the umbrella of Polygram Label Group, a newly constructed super label. In 1990, Gwen signed with the label Reprise and released her album, Hot Times, which featured singles Miss My Love, Say It Isn't So, and Sweet Bitter Love. Miss My Love and Say It Isn't So didn't do as well on the charts, but her single Sweet Bitter Love was her bounce back hit. And with this album, she moved towards R&B mainstream. As well, she topped many international charts with Jamaican produced singer Girlfriend's Boyfriend. In 1998, Gwen's music career was cut short when she was diagnosed with cancer. On February 4th, 1999, Gwen sadly passed away in Orange, New Jersey. Gwen was married to Donna Wakefield, who passed away in 1995, and she also had two daughters, Camilla and Ayana. After learning about Gwen, the one thing I learned is she had no problem walking away from a label if she felt her creativity was being controlled or if she wasn't getting the proper promotion. Gwen wasn't just an American artist, she was also an international artist that was loved all over the world. And she made a bold statement with her single, Rent. If there is any singles that you like by Gwen Guthrie, let me know down in the comments. And if there is something that you would like to add, put it down in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like content as such, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video.